Tales from the Wind in the Willows by Stella Maidment Illustrated by Graham Philpot. These are the bedtime stories from Tales from the Wind in the Willows and features the favourite adventures of Ratty, Mole, Toad and the rest of their friends along the riverbank. Tales from the Wind in the Willows these are the stories based on the original by Kenneth Graham, retold by Stella Maidman, illustrated by Graham Philpot. The contents. So we have the introduction at the beginning, then picnic on the river, the open road, the wild wood, coming home, Toad's adventures, and then finally, return to Toad Hall. Wind in the Willows by Kenneth Graham. Kenneth Graham was born in 1859 in Edinburgh. His mother sadly died when he was just four years old. After her death, Kenneth lived with his grandmother in Cookham Dean, a village near the River Thames in Berkshire. At the age of nine, he was sent to a boarding school in Oxford. Kenneth loved his school days and spent much of his free time discovering the city of, city of Oxford and exploring the River Thames in a canoe. When he left school, Kenneth began working as a clerk for the Bank of England. In 1899, he married Elspeth Thompson, and the following year, the couple had their first and only child, Alistair. Kenneth began telling his son bedtime stories about moles and water rats. It was from these stories that The Wind in the Willows developed. The Wind in the Willows was published in 1908. At first, the book was not a great success but by the mid-1920s, its popularity had grown and it had been reprinted more than 20 times. Otter, another one of the riverbank creatures, sees the good in everyone, even Toad. He is quite timid and doesn't join Rat and Mole in their escapades. Instead, he is quite happy to stay in the safety of his riverbank home. We meet Otter for the first time when Rat and Mole are rowing down the river for their picnic. He reappears just once more at the banquet held in honour of Toad's triumphant return to Toad Hall. The irrepressible but lovable Toad lives in the splendour of Toad Hall. He hurtles from one craze to the next and sometimes gets himself into terrible trouble. At one stage, he even ends up in a prison cell and his beloved home is overrun by enemies. Toad can always rely on the help of his faithful riverbank friends and, by the end of the story, he is restored to his former glory. Badger. Badger lives on the edge of the wild wood. He is a kindly, dependable animal and a friendly face in the midst of strange, threatening territory. He behaves as a father figure to the, older, to the other animals and usually takes control in difficult or dangerous situations. Badger can be quite firm with Toad in order to curb his wayward tendencies, but this is only because he has Toad's best interests at heart. Finally, the stoats, weasels and ferrets are the shady inhabitants of the wild wood. They do not live by the polite, gentlemanly code shared by Rat, Mole, Toad, Otter and Badger. When they seize Toad Hall, the ferrets guard the front gates ferociously with guns and other weapons while gangs of stoats and weasels run amok inside, breaking furniture and defacing Toad's treasured collection of paintings. These are the stories that are going to happen throughout this book. Next, we have Picnic on the River, coming shortly. <laughs>